Continuing our recent theme of Express Route related videos, let's take a look at the recent announcement of the Express Route seamless gateway migration. And let's unpack what it is. We'll show you a demo of it working and dig into some of the caveats. I think this will be a, a useful feature for many customers. And hopefully this video acts as a, a trigger for lots of people to look at their current gateway SKUs and understand if they fit with their wider network architecture and wider resilience requirements. So you can see here, this was the announcement made uh, last week or a couple of weeks ago. It talks about the ability now to migrate from gateways that were not deployed in an AZ fashion to having that AZ resilience for your Express Route Gateway function. And this was mentioned in a previous video on the channel on Express Route Resilience All Up. That was a slightly longer video where we talked about the importance of multiple circuits and on-premises routing and the gateway SKU as one of those scenarios. So check out that video if you want to go a bit wider. This was the scenario from that video, just to highlight why this is an important topic. So most customers understand that if you have an on-prem network connected into Azure, you have the concept of an express route circuit that's pinned to a point of presence, which is a single geographical location. That circuit is in the edge network. So if you want diversity in the edge network of geographical location, you need multiple express route circuits as this diagram shows. When you pull that back into the region, the region has concepts of availability zones, which again, guarantee an element of geographical resilience in terms of the underlying data centers. And it's very common for customers to use compute storage and their PaaS services across AZs. But when we come into the hub and we use our express route gateway, if we're choosing the standard, the high or the ultra performance SKUs, we have a, a lack of parity there between the gateway SKU running in a non-AZ fashion, whereas we have got other express route gateway SKUs, which let us spread those nodes out across AZs, therefore giving us parity with everything on the right side of the diagram and on the left side of the diagram. In that previous video, we talked about a preview feature that would let you change from these lesser resilient SKUs to the AZ resilient SKUs in a seamless way. Because before this migration tool, you would have had to delete the gateway and rebuild the gateway, which is an operation that can take about 20, 30 minutes sometimes for each of those processes. So you'd be looking at planning you know, minimum an hour ideally two hours to give yourself a bit of room there, maintenance window, which is not acceptable to some customers who use that gateway as a center of the world for everything. Just to remind ourselves of the Express Route Gateway SKUs that we have, as I said, we've got those standard high performance ultra and they map to the one, two and three AZ versions of the same SKUs. And I won't belabor the wider documentation around what SKUs are, but we're talking about the throughput in terms of bandwidth mainly, or packets per second and uh, other metrics. You also see there we've got the ER gateway scale, which is another preview feature of a scalable gateway, which doesn't have a fixed bandwidth. That comes as AZ uh, by default. And in the past, these were the upgrade paths that you had available to you in a seamless fashion. And you see really here, you could only move inside of the same family. So standard to high, high to ultra, ER gateway one to two or three. So you had to stay within the lane of non-AZ or AZ and just move in terms of performance of that type of gateway. With this feature, we have you know, the same family of gateways that we start with, but now we have the ability to move from the previous family of non-AZ gateways to the new, newer AZ gateways in a seamless fashion. And that's what we're really drilling into in this video. Some of the things to be aware of, uh, one of the main ones is that the way in which this works, as the documentation says, is under the covers, a, another gateway is deployed in parallel. So for a period of time, your gateway subnet needs to support the parallel running of those gateways and all of the associated nodes. So when we look at guidance in the existing documentation around the subnet size for a single gateway, for example, slash 27, as a, uh, a minimum and slash 26, if you've got beyond 16 express route circuits, effectively we need to double those figures 
when we think about using the gateway tool. So just a quick addition here from the future, as it were. If you are hitting problems with having not enough address space in your gateway subnet, obviously you can't resize it in flight without deleting your gateway. You may see this alluded to in the gateway migration tool documentation, but you are able to leverage a preview feature, which lets you add multiple prefixes to an Azure subnet, which is not something you could do in the past. You could add multiple address spaces to a VNet, but not to a subnet. So with this feature, you're able to add another VNet prefix to the VNet level address space, and then use all of that or some of that address space as an additional prefix on your subnet. So when I was playing with some of my gateways, some of them were throwing up errors when I tried to upgrade them. And I did some capture here just so you can see how that would work. So using PowerShell, this preview is not available in the portal yet. You use obviously define your VNet variable, mine being the hub here. And then you set the subnet config and we pass through two prefixes here where normally you could only pass one. I had to enroll my subscription for this preview. So you, this was the previous prefix and I've added a second prefix and saved that. And you can see when I get the subnet config, I've got two prefixes on the subnet, which then let me rerun the tool. So just wanted to add this into the video because this may be a common issue that people hit and this is a fix for that. Looking at some of the limitations, one thing that's not supported is downgrade scenarios. I'm not really sure why you would do that anyway, going back from AZ to non-AZ, but um, we can't do that. And also there's a caveat here around private endpoint reachability. So when we have traffic coming into Azure through a gateway, going to a node, the way in which traffic going to a private endpoint is routed is slightly different to normal VM traffic. And what this is saying is when we are relying on the gateway for that traffic, when we perform this migration, we may see that traffic impacted. And uh, so when we test this in a second, I'll make sure we've got private endpoint scenario happening as well. This is the very simple topology we're going to use to test. So I've got on-premises here, my client on-premises sending traffic into Azure through to my gateway subnet, through my gateway. And I've got running tests that are going to a private endpoint map to storage and a virtual machine just running inside of the same subnet. This is my gateway, and we can see at the moment, it's a standard gateway. So I'm running one of the older SKUs, non-AZ, so I have, I'm have i carrying that risk of a single AZ failure, which, as we said, may not be mapped to my wider decision matrix. And you can see here the portal does a good job straight away of warning us that we should probably fix this. It says implement zone redundant Express route gateways within Azure Advisor. And if you want to get more information on that, you can click through here and it takes you to the documentation that I referenced before. This is my on-premises client. So the virtual machine in my on-premises data center. And you can see here we are, we have a continuous PS ping running on port 80 to my virtual machine, which is a web server. And I've also got a continuous PS ping running to my private endpoint, which is mapped to storage on port 443. You can see the latencies are broadly similar because they're in the same place. And at the moment we haven't dropped a single packet. So I'll perform the gateway migration now and we'll just check to see what impact that had on our traffic. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and perform the migration using the portal. I'll start by validating my config which looks good. So I've got the right number of IPs, etc. I'm going to add a new public IP for the additional gateway instance. And then you see here it's populating a new gateway name for me, the migrated gateway. I've got a SKU there that maps to my original gateway SKU. So the standard SKU of one gig maps to ERGW1AZ. You see the actual connection object itself, the one that links the circuit to the gateway that gets migrated as a new resource, which makes sense. And I'm still using the same circuit as before. So that all looks good. Now, when I click prepare, it's behind the scenes, it's going to prepare the second instance of the gateway. So the expected deployment time here is going to be similar to you standing up a new gateway. So I'll come back in a second when that's finished and we'll just check how long it took to 
provision that other gateway. And by the way, maybe something interesting to look at while the second gateway is in the process of finishing deployment. If I come into my actual hub VNet and look at connected devices, I can actually see all my VMs, etc. But we do show the VNGs here. So you see at the moment, I've got two gateways inside of my gateway subnet, and they're both of type express route, which if you're familiar with Azure networking, would always have been not possible in the past. So that's part of this feature, allowing those parallel gateways. Okay, it's been a little bit of time now and the preparation step is finished, which means behind the scenes, that second gateway is finished deploying. It took about 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes. So we can see now we have the option available to us of migrating traffic. So whilst behind the scenes, that second gateway was being deployed, we haven't moved traffic to it yet. So we, I wouldn't have expected us to have lost a single packet, but let's just double check that. So we can see you know, almost zero loss across the two flows here. I've dropped one packet here, but you know, every now and again, a network uh, will drop packets. But um, broadly speaking, we haven't seen any disruption in traffic whilst that second gateway was being created. So let me kick off the running tests again to my virtual machine and my private endpoint. And now I'm actually going to perform the migration to the new gateway. And we'll check again at the impact of any traffic. Okay, well, that step took about five minutes to complete. And it did actually say roughly five minutes when we clicked the migrate button. Traffic now is flowing on our migrated gateway over here, reflected in the grass. And there's a final step here for me to commit, which will delete my original gateway. But let's just have a check at our traffic and see how that was impacted. So firstly, on the left-hand side is our virtual machine. So port 80, our web server traffic. Let me stop that. So that wasn't impacted at all. So not a single packet was dropped during that migration of traffic from one to the other. On the traffic going to the private endpoint side, Again, traffic was not lost. So it looks like your mileage may vary based on the private endpoint scenario. Remember at the start of the call, we talked about this caveat in the documentation about you might have in problems. So let's finish things off and confirm the migration, which will delete my other gateway. All right, well, after about uh, five, 10 minutes, we see the tool finished. It tells you that your gateway has been migrated. And if we look inside of our hub VNet connected devices now, I'll refresh that. Our original gateway has disappeared. This is our original gateway. If I try and go to the actual resource itself, it gives me an error because that resource has been deleted. So that makes sense. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Just a quick recap there. We highlighted how we are now able to move from non-AZ to AZ gateways in a seamless fashion with minimal traffic impact, with the caveat around private endpoints, also watching out for your gateway subnet size and how this was appropriate and applicable to broader express route resilience conversations, especially when you've got the lack of gateway resilience and you have multiple circuits. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.